We've known for a long time that the weather has a big impact on fire behaviour and the bad fire days are often hot, dry, very windy and the fire rapidly intensifies, becomes very strong and it takes off in the direction of the wind. What we've done in this project is we've looked at much smaller scale meteorology than in the past, down to a scale of a kilometre or so and we've begun to understand how these small scale features can have a profound impact on the way the fire behaves. The fire plume is important for a number of reasons, but the one that we're particularly interested in is the transport of embers, firebrands. Anyone who's watched a fire plume will know that it's a very dynamic animal. It can be strong and weak at puffs and so forth. To try and quantify, to predict how far the embers are going to go, we need to understand how strong the updrafts in the plume are and we need to understand how steady the plume is. For doing this work, we used the information that um, Andrew Sullivan's group in CSIRO had developed with their wind tunnel in understanding the aerodynamics of individual embers. They found that a typical ember falls at between four to six metres a second. And so we took our modelled winds, which were three-dimensional, not just direction, but also vertical, and we inserted a great many embers into the model and allowed the model to transport them away. Those embers had a fall velocity, so they were only lifted if the plume was greater than six metres a second upwards. And as they were transported, they fell down and we were able to observe the patterns that they formed on the ground. Embers by their nature are quite hard to observe in reality, in nature, because they burn up after they land. So modelling is a really good tool for getting a handle on where the embers can go. It's also a good tool for doing sensitivity studies to discover what features of the fire and the atmospheric circulation are important to understanding where the embers go. Until this work was done, we didn't have any really good information on how well a firebrand, whether it's a flaming firebrand or a glowing firebrand, sourced from, a, from a, a going fire, what the probability of that starting a new successful fire would be. So this work focused on looking at that transition from a um, ignition source that was representative of a, of a firebrand starting a successful fire. With the work that we've done previously in the vertical wind tunnel, we know that a firebrand doesn't just ignite and then drop onto the fuel bed, it actually gets transported up into the convection column and then will fall at its terminal velocity prior to, to hitting the ground. So we built a, a firebrand generator, if you will, that simulated those conditions. So we ignited the firebrand as it would in the fire. It was then put into this device that would simulate the falling of the firebrand at its terminal velocity for, for a number of minutes, and then it would land on the, on the fuel bed. And we chose two different firebrands that were representative of a flaming firebrand and a firebrand that was glowing. Those two different types of firebrands we then dropped into fuel beds that had been essentially excised out of a forest, nearby forest, um, and we measured things like the moisture content and the structure of that fuel bed, the, the roughness um, details of that fuel bed, and then placed them into a, a purpose-built wind tunnel that could actually study the airflow over a 300 mil by 300 mil slice of the fuel bed. We found that depending on the moisture content and the wind, um, a fire would reach steady state rate of spread um, in as little as 20 minutes under really dry, windy conditions. Um, under less uh, dry, well, moister conditions or less severe burning conditions, that might take as much as an hour. From a state level, we would use um, uh, fire growth and development information in terms of coordination of resources, strategic placement of strike teams or, or aircraft or other resources. At a district level, um, it would dictate how many resources potentially you might send to a fire or which fires you send your resources to first. So uh, this research uh, could be quite significant in the way 
We strategically coordinate our resources uh, and from at a state level or um, how a district uh, might deploy their resources.